So Blender is heavily customizable. Um, that goes from the windows layouts to the, uh, the, the, the colors used. And uh, see now Blender is actually open source. And you're, if you were a coder or you know some coders um, that would uh, do your bidding, then, uh, then basically the sky is the limit, really. Um, the majority of uh, most of the, um, the kind of customizing that we can do straight off the bat, though, uh, is found in the user preferences window. So we can just switch that here. Um, there was something that I'd like to draw special attention to is this input tab here. With all the customizing is laid out into various different categories here. Um, and the input is a particularly important one because this is where it holds all the hotkeys, all the shortcut keys. Um, and there's a lot of them. So if we just take a look here at the 3D view, for example, um, there are a lot of um, shortcut keys and that's just one particular area. Um, this is quite handy for another reason really because what we can do is if we're unfamiliar with a, a window, uh, for example like the outliner um, and we want to speed up our workflow, we can find out what some of the shortcut keys, uh, what some of the features are even. Um, uh, by just tracing back to what this exactly does, try these hotkeys out in those areas. Uh, same with many of the other windows that we can see here. Uh, we could also use this filter here up here at the top to say, uh, I don't know, use extrude as an, uh, as an example. Uh, we can find all the various different extruding that we can do in the various uh, windows and modes. So for example, in armature, there's a few extrudes, the curve, mesh, and ob obviously we can then uh, remap them. Uh, there's more details if we uh, click down on the arrows there and we can customize the shortcut a little further um, or find more information about it. Uh, there's also add-ons which are definitely uh, worth looking at because we can completely extend the, uh, the, the feature set of uh, Blender or add new tools and um, generally uh, there's a lot of scripts and plugins and, uh, in here essentially that's the term, the catch-all term for add-ons really. There's also themes, so we can try different um, color layouts. Um, let's just go back to the 3D view just to see that particular color layout. So as I say, uh, very, very customizable um, and uh, definitely worth rooting around in the user preferences to uh, really see what uh, is hiding and lurking and uh, might just be perfect for your particular uh, workflow. If we happen to be working on a laptop, for example, that doesn't have a numpad, uh, many laptops don't have numpads, just to save on a little bit of space, we might find ourselves in a little bit of difficulty because so many of the viewing um, uh, shortcut keys are actually mapped to the numpad. Fortunately, we've got this setting in the user preferences, which allows us to uh, emulate the numpad and therefore send many of those shortcut keys rather than using the numpad to use the numbers above the QWERTY keyboard. So if I was to press number one now, I can see we can switch into a front view, number three for the right side, number seven for the top, number five um, above the T key is going to toggle between the perspective and orthographic. We've got the zero to jump into our renderable uh, camera now. So that's all without having to use the numpad. Uh, the problem is, if we want to view selected, uh, we've not actually got um, a real way to be able to do that. So just as a brief aside, we've got these options up here, view all and view selected and view global local, which I just thought I might touch on right now. View all is not a problem because it's set to the home key. If you just press uh, the, the home key there or just that option in the menu. We can see that it's going to frame up onto everything in the scene. If we were to view the selected, we can see it zooms right up into whatever we happen to have selected. Um, <clears throat> now the benefit of that actual um, shortcut key, um, in fact this, is, this isn't massively helpful because it kind of, uh, I think that's a 3D mouse shortcut key, so uh, if you don't have one plugged in you might not be aware of what we're actually uh, meant to do there. If we actually use the spacebar search we can find the same tool there, view selected, but now this time it's mapped to the numpads period key. You can use control or without by the way, um, it's only subtly different, um, very very sub subtly different, it's essentially the same thing. Uh, so we can use this option to frame into what we want there. Um, now that's all very well and good, but the problem is, is that if we were to toggle into the edit mode now, we can use that view selected again, and that's going to view into the vertex that we happen to have selected. So that's probably what exactly what we want. In fact, that's the kind of behavior that the frame selected might have in Maya. But um, if we're trying to emulate the numpad and we want to use the uh, full stop on the keyboard instead of the full stop on the numpad, it's not going to allow us to do it 
And so if we just press the full stop now, we can see actually what's happened is it switches the pivot point type. Um, so if I just switch that back to medium point. Uh, we have got this other setting here, um, this, um, this view global local toggle, which we should probably just briefly go over um, as well. And that is uh, mapped to the numpad slash. Um, thankfully that has carried over we can use the slash key next to the Z key, or at least I can, on this UK keyboard. So if I just um, use that now, we can see we've launched into a local mode. All that is, is it essentially just frames up onto the object we've got selected and uh, just switches everything else off on the scene. Uh, so we can kind of use that a little bit if that's sort of what we want. But um, the problem with that is, is two things. Is um, First is that potentially we might actually want to be able to see everything else in the scene, uh, regardless of the fact that um, because we're in local mode, it sort of ignores whether anything is renderable in the 3D view or not, uh, the visibility of it. Uh, if we just press Z again, uh, sorry, the uh, slash key next to the Z key to uh, just come out of that local mode back into the global mode, we can see everything has appeared back again. Uh, the other problem is if I press that slash key again, um, and maybe with the vertex selected there, press that again uh, to try and toggle in. You can see it actually doesn't zoom into the vertex, just sort of ver zooms always into the object uh, as a whole. So although that is quite handy at times, um, it's maybe not uh, useful to be able to um, uh, replace that um, view selected as a shortcut key by default. So that means we're pretty much forced to have to uh, change the default settings and remap a shortcut key here, uh, which is obviously not a massive problem. Uh, now, I would probably suggest just um, foregoing this one because this numpad slash key is actually quite convenient for my left hand when I'm on the keyboard. So I'm actually just going to suggest that, but obviously you can feel free to do this onto anything you want. The user preferences here, we can launch that window. And then what we can do is in the filter, making sure that we're in the input tab still, just type in view selected. And we can see there's a couple of options here. Uh, in fact, there's these, if we just click on these arrows here, you can see there's these within the 3D view, there's these three options here. Here. Um, and as I say, there's the control numpad uh, period key and there's the numpad period key. Um, those are essentially doing exactly the same. We've just got this um, all regions uh, checkbox, which is slightly different. I think that's just if you happen to be on the quad view, um, it'll view at what you have selected um, in all four views or one of the other options, which isn't all regions, uh, will not take on that behavior. So that, that's all it is. But if you're not sure what I'm talking about there, just uh, maybe try it out. But otherwise, um, this view selected here, um, if we actually just try to click on the, where it says numpad period key there, we can just, uh, we could have done this on the other one, by the way, it doesn't really matter. But if we just use the slash key next to the Z key there, you can see it's now said numpad slash because we're still under the emulate uh, mode. And um, uh, we'll just leave it as that, just going to close that window down. And now if I press the slash key, we can see it zooms in, that's fine. Let's just check once we've got our vertex selected, if it zooms into the vertex, and it does. So, um, and also when we're in object mode as well, it's always worth checking your hotkey for that mode when you're working in the 3D view. And um, we can zoom into that as well, and uh, that's all fine. So. That's just something I thought might be worth pointing out just to do with um, without working on a uh, uh, without a numpad really. So um, hopefully that's um, uh, give you something uh, that's uh, useful. So when starting out in any application, uh, but especially 3D applications, just because they're so chock full of hotkeys, um, it's very easy to slip onto one of these hotkeys and maybe just launch into a tool or a feature or remove a tool or a feature and we just kind of get ourselves a bit stuck. Um, I'm just going to try and anticipate some of the, maybe the, the most potentially problematic or common ones. Um, first of all, I just thought I'd just talk about this P key here. Uh, when you press the P key, we launch into the play mode uh, of the game engine. And um, this is obviously, if you're not aware of this, this is especially tricky to get out of because we can't press P again or we can't press spacebar to maybe search for another tool. Uh, potentially we just think that this has completely locked up the screen. Um, what's actually happening here is we can't press anything on the keyboard now anymore apart from the escape key to just get out of it. Uh, just purely because um, potentially we've already got the P key mapped to something else in the game logic. So for example, we might be using QAOP, if anyone still uses that anymore, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, we might be using that as well as space to jump or, or fire or something like that. Uh, but anyway, the um, uh, so it's mapped to the escape key to be able to get out of that. And we don't have any game logic. Uh, we haven't programmed anything into this just at the moment. So hence why it just sort of freezes the view. 
Um, so uh, aside from that, um, there's some other options, uh, some other problems that might appear, which is to do with if we just take a look at the user preferences and just make sure that this is in its default setting, so not emulating the numpad there. Um, and this is because the numbers above the QWERTY keyboard normally take on um, uh, they, their shortcut keys are linked to these layers down here. Uh, so uh, currently we're on the first layer, but if we press number three, for example, we're going to switch to the third layer across, but now everything vanishes. And in particular, it might be a little bit confusing because we can still see the renderability and visibility of everything in the um, viewport there. Uh, so if we just switch back to that first layer, just click on it there, we can see everything's back. So that's all it is. Everything tends to get created into the first layer. We can actually shift select on these, by the way, uh, just to view multiple ones at one, any, any given time. Um, something else that I just thought I might point out while we're in the header of the 3D view here is this um, 3D manipulator gizmo here that sort of switches it on and off in the viewport. Uh, potentially, if you rely on this quite a lot, you might have to press slipped and press control space to hide it if you didn't want to do that. Uh, but uh, uh, while we're at it, the, obviously that's quite a handy uh, shortcut key to have. We've got control space there. Um, something else that we might fall foul of is um, if we press W, and then restrict render unselected uh, and quickly click that by accident. Um, what's happened is if we were to now try and render this, um, we're only going to be able to render this one object that we had selected. So we can see over here now it's actually switched off the renderable icon for these other uh, three cubes that we've got in the scene here. Now if we press W again and clear all, we can see that it's going to bring everything back or we could actually just manually just click on these back again if we wanted to do that way. Um, one last thing is um, we can actually press shift space to maximize any of the views. So while the cursor hovers over one of the views, we can maximize it. Uh, I've just mentioned that because that's a kind of a toggle between um, a full and a minimized view. And uh, that's obviously very, very handy, but potentially you might lose everything in the scene. Uh, we actually got, have got this button at the top here, back to previous as well, but um, that's just one last thing to point out. There's obviously going to be a lot more, um, and the, the more detailed you get and more advanced you get, the more nuanced they're probably going to become, but um, that's true of pretty much any application really. So uh, hopefully that just um, helps explain a couple of uh, common problems and that might cause frustration very, very early on.